let's look at how we can send information over the internet but still keep it secret. For this I'll need two volunteers, please. Uh, oh, you, you are very keen. You come on down. And let's have somebody, somebody from this side. Yes, let's have you. You come on down. All right, let's come and stand here. And uh, what's your name? Josh. Josh, OK, you wait there. And if you'd like to come and stand here for me, what's your name? Mark. Mark, OK, just stay there. Now, Josh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a secret message, and I want you to unscramble it. But first, to make sure that you don't see what the message is, we're going to pop a blindfold on you and a little pair of headphones. OK, so here we go. I'm going to play you some nice music through these headphones, and you won't be able to hear anything that's going on. It'll be just about a minute or so, OK? All right, OK, so um, he can't uh, hear and see what's happening. So under here, I have my message, so I can now reveal my message. And of course, like everything on the, on the internet and on the web, it's just a sequence of ones and zeros. And we've chosen a nice simple message, one naught, one naught, one naught, just so that you can remember it easily. So the next thing to do is to take this message and to lock it with a key. And again, a key on the, in the electronic world is just a sequence of ones and noughts. But it's very important that this key be generated at random. So to help us do that, we have a special random number generator. OK, now, what I'd like you to do is just to roll this across the floor nice and quickly and generate lots of random ones and noughts. And I'd like everybody to shout out the numbers, OK? <laughs> OK, keep going, as quickly as you can. Zero. Next. Zero. Keep going. Um, right, come on, two more. Zero. One more. Zero. Zero. Excellent. OK, thank you very much. You can go back to your seat now. OK, so this is our message, and this is the key. And to lock the message with the key, we have a very simple rule. We take each column at a time, and if the two digits are the same, we put a zero. And if they're different, we're going to put a one. So these are the same, so they need a zero. These are different, so they need a one. These are different, they get a one. These are different, they get a one. And those are the same, so they get a zero. OK. So we've taken the message, and we've locked it with the key. And we can now send this to our volunteer over here. But first, I'm just going to cover up the original message. OK, there we go. Now, we can take off the headphones here. Hey, was that some nice music you had there? OK, I'll we'll hand those across there. We'll take off the blindfold. Excellent. OK, now, if you'd like to come with me, if you'd like to come and stand over there at that end. So we've sent you a secret message here, which is also called a cipher. And we've also sent you the key that was used to lock the message. So what I want you to do is to use the key to unlock the cipher and work out what the original message was. Now, the way we're going to do this is very simple. We take each column at a time, and if these two digits are different, we'll put a 1 in here, and if they're the same, we'll put a 0, OK? So I'll get you started. This first one, these are different, so we put a 1. OK, can you tell me what goes in there? That's not. That's it, that's a not good. And this one? Not 1. 1, that's it, excellent. I think you're getting the hang of this, good. This is? Not. Not, excellent. This is? 1. A 1. And finally, naught. A naught. Excellent. OK. So that's unscrambled the message. And just to check, let's go back and reveal the original message. And it is indeed the same. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we've seen one way in which we can lock and unlock data electronically. But there's a huge problem. The sender and the receiver need to have the same key. And it's important that nobody else knows what that key is. And we can't just send the key across the internet because somebody will copy it. Now, for a long time, it was thought that this problem of key exchange was impossible to solve. But of course, without a solution, the whole world of internet shopping and banking and secure websites would never have happened. Let's first look at how we can solve the problem of key exchange in the physical world. And to help me do this, I'd like three volunteers, please. Uh, yes, would you like to come on out? Um, have somebody from there. You can come on out. Let's have somebody from the middle, shall we? Yes, you. In, that's you. Yep, that's it. 
So if you'd like to come and stand here, what's your name? Megan. Megan, if you'd like to stand there, that's good. What's your name? Barnaby. Barnaby, okay, that's good. And you can stand here, what's your name? Pippa. Pippa, excellent, okay. So you're going to be our sort of delivery service, okay? And Andy and I are going to try to work out how we can send a key to each other. Now Andy over there has two copies of a blue key. If he can get one of those keys to me, then we can send secret information backwards and forwards. The problem is, the only way he can send things to me is by using our delivery service, and we don't want these people to get hold of the key. All right, so what's he gonna do? Well, what Andy can do is he can take one of those keys and he can put it in a box, and he can then lock the box using his red padlock. And once he's done that, he's going to hand it to the delivery service. So if you'd like to pass it down the line, that's good. And send it to me. Excellent. And you'll notice, because the box is locked, these delivery people can't get at the key. But the problem is, of course, when I get the box, I can't get at the key either, because I, um, I can't open the red padlock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my own padlock, which is green, and I'm going to lock the box using this padlock. And then I'm going to send it back to Andy. Again, the box is safely locked, so the delivery people can't get hold of that blue key inside. And now when Andy receives the box, it's his red padlock, so he has the red key, so he can remove the red padlock. And once he's done that, he can then send it back to me using the delivery service. And again, the box is still locked, so they can't get inside. Excellent, thank you. And then finally, when I receive it, of course this is my padlock and I have the, the green key to this padlock, so I can remove the padlock and then inside the box is the blue key. So Andy and I have now managed to exchange keys. We have the same blue key and nobody else knows what that key is. Okay, thank you very much. Now this kind of three-way exchange process works very well in the physical world. But in the electronic world, everything is just ones and noughts. And the problem is that the people in the middle would see three messages going backwards and forwards, and it turns out that gives them enough information to unscramble the message and reveal the key. In the electronic world, we're gonna need something a bit more sophisticated. What we need is a clever piece of mathematics called a one-way function. We can think of this as something which is very easy to do one way, but very hard to undo. Now I have an example here of a one-way process. This is a balloon, and it contains a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. I'm going to set fire to it. Anybody know what's going to happen when I set fire to it? <coughs> It'll make water. Excellent. What else is going to happen? Explode. It'll explode. Okay, there's going to be a loud bang. All right, so I'm going to put on my safety goggles and my gloves. It's one of my favourite bits of the lecture, this. Okay, and I think this is worth a little bit of a countdown. So you want to give me a three, two, one countdown? Ready? Three, two, three, one. <laughs> okay, that was great. Thanks, Andy. So that was an example of a one-way process. It was very easy to take some hydrogen and oxygen and combine them to make water. But to take water and turn it back into hydrogen and oxygen is very hard to do. It needs a lot of energy. So let's see how we can use a one-way process to understand how keys are exchanged on the internet. Now to help us do this, somebody sitting in the audience, you I think, is already dressed up, especially for the occasion, so if you'd like to come on down. Would like to stand there. And what's your name? Olivia. Olivia. All right. So Olivia is going to be the internet. And again, Andy and I are going to try to exchange keys, but this time in the electronic world. We're going to send all our information through you, and you're going to try as hard as you can to steal our secret key. All right. So keys in the electronic world are really numbers, but we're going to represent numbers by colours. So each colour represents a different number. And we're going to start with the colour blue. Now, blue is not a secret colour. Everybody knows blue, so I've got some blue, Andy's got some blue, and Olivia's got some blue. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a secret colour, and my secret colour is going to be yellow. Now, I can't just send yellow across the internet to Andy because it'll be stolen on the way. So to keep it secret, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it with the blue. When I mix yellow and blue, I get green. And that's another example of a one-way process. 
just took a few seconds to mix the yellow and the blue to make green. But if you had to take the green and separate all the molecules out to get the blue and the yellow again, it would take millions of years. It would be very hard. OK, so I'm going to take this green. I'm going to send it over the internet. But remember, you're trying to steal all our secrets. So what I want you to do is to make a copy of this colour. OK, so what I want you to do is to pour half of the liquid into this container. If you just pour it up to that line, that's good. And keep going a bit more. And I'd stop about there. That's excellent. OK, and you can pass the rest over to Andy. Now, Andy's going to do something similar. He's going to dream up a secret colour. In his case, the secret colour is red. Again, he can't send the red to me through the internet or it will be copied. So he's going to use this one-way process. He's going to mix it with the blue. So he gets a sort of purpley colour. And now he's going to send that mixture to me over the internet. And again, you're trying to steal our information. You've got the hang of it. So you pour half of it into that container, just up as far as the line. A little bit more, a bit more. Excellent, thank you very much. And you give the rest to me. OK, so here I have a mixture of red and blue. What I'm going to do is to add my secret colour, which is yellow. So I now have a mixture of red, yellow and blue. Andy's got a mixture of yellow and blue, and he's going to add his secret colour, which is red. So Andy now also has a mixture of red, yellow and blue. So we've managed to agree on the same secret colour. And if we just put these together in the middle, I hope you'll be able to see that those are indeed the same colour. All right, what about our internet thief? What, what, what information do you have? Can you make this same colour? Well, let's have a look. Um, well, this colour is a mixture of red and blue, and that's, um, that's definitely a bit different. You've got some yellow in here mixed with some blue, so you can't unmix the colours, remember. You can only mix things. So why don't you try adding this to that and see if you can copy our secret colour. And uh, what we'll see is that... That's it, just pour it all in, the whole lot. That's good. Now, this is a different colour. It's a different colour because this is a mixture of red plus blue plus yellow plus blue. So it's got twice as much blue in it. And the only other colour you know about is blue. So if you pour that in as well, that's actually just going to make things even worse. There's even too much blue now. That's even stopped there. That's fine. So we've seen how Andy and I have been able to agree on a secret colour. And in the electronic world, that means we've agreed on a secret number. So next time you see that little yellow padlock on your web browser, you'll know that your computer and the website computer have done a little exchange of secret numbers just like this one. And that means it's now OK to put your credit card information or whatever it is into that website because it'll be scrambled and other people won't be able to read it. OK, thank you very much. Now, the binary keys that are used on the internet are very long, and it would take a supercomputer trillions of years to crack the code by trial and error. But in yesterday's lecture, we learned about something called a quantum computer. This would be able to do colossal numbers of calculations at the same time, and could indeed be used to crack coded messages very quickly. Now, practical quantum computers might be many years away, but what if someone were able to build a quantum computer? Is there a way to send secret messages that even a quantum computer cannot crack? Well, there is, and it also depends on quantum physics. It's called quantum key exchange. I have here a laser, and it's going to fire a beam of light through this, which is a polarizer. The polarizer will filter out all the light except light in a particular direction. Now, this, this polarizer is vertical. So the light coming through the polarizer will be vibrating up and down in a vertical motion. And we can think of this as somebody sending information. So, for example, they might be in Cambridge. Over here, I have another polarizer and a screen. And we can think of this as the person who's receiving the information. So they might, for instance, be in London. OK, if we bring the lights down, I'll just turn on the laser. And just going to use a bit of smoke just to help us see the laser. There we go. Now, what we see is that the light is passing through the second polarizer and is hitting this screen. What I'm going to do now is to rotate this polarizer until it's at 90 degrees to the first polarizer. And you'll see the light is blocked. So, what we've done here is to use this polarizer in London 
to measure the direction of the other polarizer back in Cambridge. So information has been passed from Cambridge to London. OK, let's suppose now that somebody wants to copy that information as it goes past. So they're partway between Cambridge and London. Now, with ordinary electronic data, somebody can make a perfect copy of it and we'd never know. But with this quantum key distribution system, something rather special happens. So, let's just take a look at that laser beam. Remember that the beam is being blocked by the second polarizer over in uh, London. And now I'm going to try to measure the direction of that polarizer by inserting another polarizer here. And let's see what happens when I do that. So when I put this polarizer into the beam, we see that light now gets through onto the screen. So this is an extremely peculiar effect. If I remove the polarizer, the light gets blocked again. So inserting this dark material, this dark piece of plastic into the laser beam, actually causes the light to get from here to here. And when I remove this piece of polarizer, it causes the light to be blocked. So if we're here in London, we can detect the fact that somebody has actually tried to copy the information as it goes past. And that means we know that somebody's copied our key and we can't use it safely to send secret information. OK, I'm going to pop that laser off now. Now, quantum key exchange systems like this are already in use in some banks. And there's even a research group at Bristol that's working on a miniaturized system to go inside a mobile phone. So let's go back to Andy's website and see if we can find that secret information. Well, we've already established our secure connection, and it's now asking me to authenticate myself by typing in the name of my first pet. Well, I've already registered with Andy's website, so I'm going to type in the name of my first pet, which is George, and it says, click here to play the video. So let's click on that link. And while that video is downloading, let's think a little bit about what's going on when we download data over the internet. The internet consists of hundreds of millions of computers connected together in a complex network. And the explosive growth of the internet means that more and more people are downloading more and more information. And just like the roads, the internet can become congested. After the break, we'll find out about some of the very strange effects that can happen when the roads, or indeed the internet, becomes congested. Thank you.